Come on up. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for all of you uh, for being here today. And, and what we'd like to talk about is the progress we made. The last time we were here was March 13th, and we've made tremendous progress. And none of that progress could be made without the 47,000 people at Quest Diagnostics that are working around the clock on uh, working up the test and running the test and delivering the results that we need. As far as results, we've made uh, tremendous progress. Uh, we are currently at Quest Diagnostics uh, testing about 50,000 tests per day. We've been pushed by the task force to bring up that number. By the end of May, we'll have 100,000 tests per day, about 3 million tests, and these are the molecular tests that we do today. We've also brought up serological testing. We started that this past week, and by the end of May, we'll be close to 250,000 a day, about 7,000 a month. So you put those two numbers together, together, it's about 10 million tests by the end of May that we'll be doing at Quest Diagnostics. We're doing that also in a quicker way Turnaround times were somewhat of an issue. At the early days, we reduced that to one to two days. Our turnaround time for people in beds, hospital beds, is less than 24 hours. And we're doing that in the same way we've done it with the FDA and with CLIA, delivering the quality that you all expect. And convenience will improve as well with convenient solutions that will be able to swab individuals more easily and also deliver to consumer, the ability to have consumers choose a test online with a telehealth provider. So with that, I'd like to offer my colleague the podium as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, thank you very much for your leadership and for having us all here today. Our scientists and our lab technicians are working day and night in order to do as many tests as we possibly can for the American public and to turn those tests around as quickly as possible. Just 45 days ago, we said we could do several thousand tests a day. We can now do 60,000 tests a day, and we're continuing to expand that capacity every single day. In addition, our scientists are working to make testing more convenient and easier. We have the swabs now that are much smaller than the original ones that we originally launched with, but we also have the Pixel by LabCorp at-home test. That test right now is for healthcare workers on the front line and first responders, but we will be rolling that out much more broadly over the coming weeks. And we're gonna roll it out with absolutely no upfront cost for the individual consumers. At the same time, we are building our capacity for serology testing. And we can currently do about 50,000 today, and we'll be able to do several hundred thousand per day by the middle of May. And we're going to be working with the retailers, our colleagues that are here today, to help them as they expand their testing capabilities across the entire country. And lastly, Mr. President, we have a rather large drug development business, and we will continue to work with our colleagues in the pharmaceutical and the biotechno biotechnology industry to ensure we do everything we possibly can to enroll clinical trials fast so that we can get new treatments and potential vaccines. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. President, thank you and thank, uh, and thank uh, the administration for all of their collaboration to enable Thermal Fisher Scientific uh, to be able to produce the test kits that companies like LabCorp and Quest and the public health labs around the world run. Um, we met our original commitments of producing 5 million kits a week, and we're up to uh, scaling that to double that uh, in the coming weeks in terms of supporting testing around the world. Um, I'd like to thank my 75,000 colleagues around the world for their tireless effort. Uh, to make that a reality and supporting all of, all of our customers to have the testing necessary to get America back to work. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm John Nims with U.S. Cotton, and we are the company that is going to produce the swabs to be used in these testing kits. We have about 1,200 people in our company, and in our Cleveland operation, they have pivoted from, as you've said, the Q-tip uh, style swab to a swab that's going to have a plastic stick with a polyester tip so that they can be assembled into these kits. Our Cl Cleveland team has done a wonderful job with this, and I'm very, they're very excited to be able to help in this effort. So thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you very much. Great job. Uh, 
Mr. President, thank you. Uh, I'm Larry Merlo with CVS Health, and it was just over a month ago that we opened up our first uh, drive-through uh, test site. Uh, and since that time, we have opened large-scale testing facilities across five states in partnership with the administration and working with the governors of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Georgia, uh, and Michigan. And these sites are enabling us to test approximately 1,000 individuals a day with uh, real-time results. We now have a capacity to test about 35,000 uh, individuals each, each week. And this afternoon, we announced plans to expand that capacity even further. Uh, beginning in May, we will install testing capabilities uh, in up to 1,000 CVS pharmacies. We'll be using uh, our drive throughs and our parking lots with swab testing. Uh, so again, you'll see that coming online uh, you know, in May. And we also recognize uh, the fact that you know, the virus is disproportionately affecting our minority communities. So we're working in partnership with organizations like the National Medical Association uh, to bring testing and care into the traditionally underserved communities. We're also beginning to implement mobile capabilities with which to do that. And as businesses are you know, restarting their workforce, we'll also be looking to assist them you know, as they begin to come back to a normal operation. And finally, as my other colleagues, I just want to thank uh, my CVS colleagues. They have done a phenomenal job in terms of helping people in many different ways all across communities uh, in the country. And they're part of this army of healthcare professionals and you know, front store uh, and you know, f first line supervisors and workers that are doing terrific things to bring our country together. And for that, uh, we owe them a huge amount of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Appreciate the, uh, the invitation to be here today. And it was just 45 days ago when we were here. I'm Richard Ashworth. I oversee Walgreens in the U.S. And I just want to start off, Larry, like you, thanking the over 200,000 Walgreens team members who are in stores every day all across America taking care of our patients and our customers, you know, giving them essential daily needs, the prescriptions, obviously, that they need, and even COVID testing uh, while we're here. We also announced today we'll be expanding our testing capabilities across all states, including Puerto Rico. We'll be able to triple uh, the volume that we do now in partnership with our uh, lab uh, partners, and we're excited to be able uh, to do that. Uh, we're really excited with the public-private partnership that we have here, because that's what enabling us to do this, and we look forward to working with the additional states uh, to get these sites up and running as fast as possible. As a pharmacist, I just want to say one quick thing. I'm really proud to be part of this profession, and not just Walgreens pharmacists and, and pharmacy employees, but all of them across grocery, mass, independence. You're really doing what you should be doing and what you went to school for to help patients, counseling them on their medicines and helping them understand the problems that we're facing. You know, pharmacy is right here uh, in it with everyone together in the community, and we look forward to being part of the testing like we are now, serology, whatever that might look like in the future, and eventually treatment when the vaccine does come. So thank you, Mr. President, for the opportunity. Great job. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. We appreciate all you're doing to get America back to work and doing it safely. I represent Kroger, and my name is Rodney McMullen. And I am so proud of our nearly half a million associates that are doing everything every day to keep customers safe and our associates safe. And one of the things that we were able to do is provide the basic practices we're doing. We call it blueprint. And it's the things that all of us can learn from on how to get America back working. Uh, we also announced earlier today, uh, continuing to accelerate our practice on testing. Uh, we are actively engaged in six states. Uh, next, in the next couple of weeks, we'll take that to 12 states. And the number of tests that we do continues to grow faster than that. Uh, together, we will win. Together, we will solve this problem and move on. America is always great. Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Doug McMillan. I'm a Walmart associate, and I, too, would like to start by thanking our associates for everything that they're doing in our stores, Sam's Clubs, distribution centers, and in our e-commerce fulfillment centers. They've been inspiring and continue to have a can-do attitude and step up. It's much appreciated. 
Um, we started um, 45 days ago, as did everyone else, and we've been operating sites for a while now. We're now up to 20 sites across 11 states. By the end of next week, we'll be to 45, and by the end of the May, end of May, we'll be at 100. Um, we also, a few weeks ago, uh, Vice President Pence and I were in a distribution center in Virginia, a food distribution center. He was kind enough to come and thank our associates for us there, which is much appreciated. And the president and vice president were speaking on the phone about surgical gowns, and the president asked if we could um, put in a, an order for millions of surgical gowns, and um, we don't normally buy those, so I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to do that. But I'd like to thank our apparel team and McKesson in particular for partnering with us. We've been able to, in the month of April, secure an additional two and a half million surgical gowns. Um, and by the end of May, we'll have an additional six million available to help. So thank you for the opportunity to serve and for Great being job. here. Great job, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, and thanks to the team for getting this great operation up and running for the benefit of the country. I'm Hayward Donegan with Rite Aid, and we are currently operating 40 percent of the current test sites in 25 locations across eight states. And we had the, I had the opportunity as I was driving up to stop at our Richmond location and see the testing in action and thank the associates whether it be security or pharmacy, front end, everybody who's helping with this great effort and um, all of the customers that appreciate this so much. It was really amazing to see. And I want to thank my 50,000 associates also for keeping these retail locations up and running uh, during these really, really tough times. It's been quite amazing. And we too are going to expand our testing and we're doing about 1,500 a day. Thanks. Thank you. So thank you all very much. It's incredible what we've done together over a short period of time. I want to thank our Vice President for the task force and the work. Uh, every day it gets better, and we had a fantastic call with the governors today. And uh, I would say that they are uh, as, as thrilled as they can be, considering that the fact is that there has been so much unnecessary death in this country. It could have been stopped, and it could have been stopped short. but. Somebody a long time ago, it seems, decided not to do it that way. And the whole world is suffering because of it, 184 countries at least. But I want to thank all of uh, these great business men and women for uh, the job they've done. They've been fantastic with us, working with us. And as you know, for several weeks, my administration has encouraged the governors to leverage unused testing capacity in states. Very few understood that we have tremendous capacity. Then one week ago, we provided each governor with a list of names, addresses, and phone numbers of the labs where they could find additional testing capacity in their states. Within 48 hours, the number of tests performed across the country began to absolutely skyrocket. On Saturday alone, more than 200,000 test results were reported, which is a gigantic number, bigger than any country anywhere in the world for a much longer period of time, a number that is an increase earlier in the month when we tested roughly less than 100,000 a day. So we much more than doubled it, and that will be doubling again very shortly. We are continuing to rapidly expand our capacity and confident that we have enough testing to begin reopening and the reopening process. We want to get our country open, and the testing is not going to be a problem at all. In fact, it's going to be one of the great assets that we have. Today, we're releasing additional guidance on testing to inform the states as they develop their plans for a phased and very safe reopening. Our blueprint describes how states should unlock their full capacity, expand the number of testing platforms, establish monitoring systems to detect local outbreaks, and conduct contact tracing. We have it all. Other countries are calling to find out what are we doing and how do you do it, and we're helping them. We're dealing with a lot of countries helping them on testing, just like we did on the ventilators. I directed our Medicare program to make it easier for seniors to get the testing that they need, and the pharmacies, uh, as you know, we are allowing pharmacies now to do testing. 
And uh, we have other testing locations that we're going to be allowing also. But having pharmacies get involved in testing is a very big deal. We're also asking governors to do the same in their Medicaid program. So they're going to be able and authorized to do the same in Medicaid. So it's a big — that's a big deal. So we're deploying the full power and strength of the federal government to help states, cities, to help local government uh, get this horrible plague over with and over with fast. There's tremendous energy in our country right now. There's energy like people haven't seen in a long time, a spirit that they have not seen. And uh, we're doing very well, very well, considering what happened to us and considering if you look at what happened to others, uh, this is something that the world has not seen for a long, long time. You can probably go back to 1917, where uh, it was a terrible period of time. You all know what happened in 1917. That's over 100 years ago. With that, I'd like to uh, introduce, if I might, uh, Dr. Burks, if you could come up, and then, Admiral, you'll come up. And uh, between the two of you, you'll explain the entire process and how much 